Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to Christ our Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was, li- was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, He gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed. He did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. They said to him then, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know, even he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. This took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today we have a beautiful gospel for all of you where it is the first chapter in the Gospel of John. And in this gospel, it's one of the, uh, the Gospel of John is one of those that a lot of Christians, whenever they ask someone to read the Bible, the first thing they say is start with John, start with the Gospel of John. Now, I tend not to agree with that. I usually say start with Luke, but you know, usually most Christians, they'll say start with John. And so we can see in the very beginning of this gospel, it's so beautiful that John really wants us to understand who Jesus is, right? So I'm going to explain a little bit today about the Trinity, who God is, who is the inside, the inner dwelling of God, who is he? So today we heard these beautiful words that we need to try to understand. He says, in the beginning was the word, okay, in the beginning was the word. So basically, John is saying Jesus, obviously, hopefully you know this, Jesus is the Word, and he says he he was in the beginning, which means he's been there from all eternity. The Word has always been there. And then it says the Word was with God. The Word was with God. What does that mean? In the Greek, it says the Word is turned towards God, is facing God. So Jesus is facing his father. He's turned towards him, and he's always looking at his dad. He's looking at his father. And he says, and then he says, the word was God. He says it very clearly. 
Jesus is not just the prophet. He says the word was God. And he was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. And so this is so important for us to try to comprehend as Catholics how we understand that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So this is what John is doing very clearly. And the best way that I like to explain this section simply is by understanding something very clear. Even without the Bible, most philosophers will say, if they try to understand who God is, they'll say, God is love. Even the scriptures say, God is love. And so this helps us to understand how God has to be three in one. Now, bear with me. I know it's a lot of information, but bear with me a little bit, okay? So God is love. So what does it mean to love, okay? So imagine if God didn't create us. He didn't create anyone yet. No matter, no world, no universe, nothing physical. So if God is love, he must be loving another. To love is to give of yourself to another completely. Give of yourself totally to another person. Now, if you're the only person that exists and you only love yourself, that's selfish. That goes against God's nature. God is selfless. So when we try to understand who God is, this is what Jesus is revealing. He's saying God is love. So if God is love, he must always be loving another. So God cannot be God without Jesus. God the Father cannot exist without Jesus, and Jesus cannot exist without God the Father. And the love between them is the Holy Spirit. So one good way to understand how is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, people ask me sometimes, how do we understand? The first place, think about it when you answer, say, God is love. God cannot be selfish. He is selfless, and he must be loving another. The best way I love to, when I, uh, the best way I love to explain this is in Genesis, okay? This is a little Bible study for you today. It's okay. So in Genesis, it's so beautiful. The way I like to explain the Trinity is when God created Adam and Eve, he said, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. First, he says, let us, plural, who's us? And then he says, in our, plural, our image. So he's already speaking about himself in the plural in Genesis. But then he says, in our image. This is very, very important. He says, so basically, the way the church understands this, when he says image, God made, for example, God made Adam, right? Did he just make Adam in the garden? He didn't make just one person. So when he said, I want to make an image of myself on earth, he made Adam. And, he, and then imagine if he just made Adam. Who is Adam supposed to love? Himself? Adam, to be made in the image of God, he must love another just like God. So God made him Eve. So God says the two will become one. One flesh. So God, the love between the Father, the Son, forms a third person, the Holy Spirit, and now Adam is made in the image of God and Eve. Now you have Adam and Eve. They become one and they form a third person, a child. So isn't that beautiful? I love to explain this. Why? Because sometimes when people want to know if God exists, the, one of the best proofs for God is you. Your body is actually made in a Trinitarian image. So whenever, you know, we have a million weddings at St. George, you know, they all come down this aisle. Whenever I see a wedding and they, a person gets married, they're becoming a picture of God on earth. So some of you who have kids here, you have children. When a husband and wife are together with their child, God says, that is a picture of me. You're a relational being that loves and forms life. When I found that out, when I learned that and when I was in seminary, I was like, wow. That is so beautiful. People are actually made in the image of God, a Trinitarian image. So whenever you see a family and you can say, wow, this, this is 
what God looks like to an extent, right? Okay. One thing that I want to touch on just for a second with that is when Adam and Eve become one flesh, their conjugal love is so sacred that the conjugal action, I'm not going to describe it for children, but is actually a Trinitarian action. Marriage is so sacred between a man and a woman that their love, their physical love, is actually a Trinitarian action. That action is so sacred in marriage that that's why when God made marriage is so important that it's between a man and a woman and anything that goes against that desecrates that sacred image, that image of God, the Trinitarian action. And so this is so important for us to realize God is stamped in our bodies. Okay, so that's a little explanation of the Trinity. That's my own explanation a little bit. Well, not my own, but used from other people. But, but there's a million different ways to explain that. But it's important that we understand that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If we don't understand our faith, you know, someone asks you, you know, how many times do I meet a Chaldean, um, someone who tells me, you know, Jesus was, you know, he has supernatural powers. Or I was arguing with a woman, and she's not probably here, but last week she was a Jehovah's Witness, and she was telling me Jesus is the angel Michael. And I was like, no, 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 no. You know, Jesus is God. He's one with the Father. And then he says that he brings light and truth, right? He says he brings in, he's the light, and he brings in grace and truth. Okay, grace and truth. I mix it up a little bit. Okay, so he brings grace and truth. So what is God doing? So Jesus is the word. It says he becomes flesh, and then he brings grace. What's grace? The divine life of God. So God comes down, to take you up, to make you like God. So he says you can become children of God, and he's going to share his life with you. So God becomes flesh to make you like God. And then he says he brings truth. And this is an important one, truth. He's going to save us by his grace, and then he's going to tell us his truth on how to live who you are. So why is this so important today? The more we understand this, Because this changes our worldview, the way we live our life today, right? How does that change it? If I believe God is Trinity and I'm made in his image, that means I'm sacred. That means I'm son of the Father. So because we understand that as Christians, this is how we know how when something is sinful or not. If I don't believe these basic concepts, it's easy to live in sin. Because if I don't know that I'm a son of God and I don't know I'm made in his image, I can destroy that image. I can destroy myself. And so Jesus brings grace and truth, and he's the light. He's revealing this to us. He's bringing in light. So in the gospel today, Jesus is trying to enlighten all of us and saying, this is who I am, and this is who you are. If you don't begin to comprehend who you are in Jesus Christ, that your body is so sacred. You know, Jesus in the other scriptures, he says, if your eye is not sound, he says, your whole body will be filled with darkness. But he says, if your eye is sound, he says, your whole body will be filled with light, right? The light he came to give. So the more we, we take in Jesus and understand him, the more light he gives me to not live in darkness. He pushes out the darkness of our life. And so it's so important, maybe later this week, why don't you read the prologue of, Saint, of John and really reflect who this God is and what did he come to bring? Because if we're not understanding how sacred our bodies are and that we're made in this image, I can destroy this body with sin, with lust, with greed, with pride, with selfishness. I can do every kind of evil very easily and still seem like a nice person when I work in my dollar store and say, hi, how are you? God bless you. How are you doing today? People are like, you're a nice guy. But if I don't know this, I'll destroy his image easily, easily. And so today, let's take a deeper look at what does Jesus want to give? He truly wants to give us light so that he can enlighten us and give us grace and truth 
Amen.